Welcome to Vermont. Welcome to the ice. Here goes five days of living, surviving, and enjoying the beautiful country of Vermont. <laughs> Fish on! Birch bark, which is like paper. So as you guys can tell, I've got a sled, I've got a big dry bag, I've got some equipment here, but you're probably asking yourselves, is this enough equipment for five days? Is this, well, what are you talking about? Living in Vermont, why are you in Vermont? What's going on here? And this is kind of what I talked about when I was gonna be like leaving the office and doing trips that really matter to me. This is one trip that I've just wanted to do and get out there. And I think being able to fly to Vermont really focused on, hey, you can only bring two checked bags and a carry-on and that's all you have. Now I'm gonna go over my whole setup, explain what we're doing in this video. And pretty much this is just like chapter one of hopefully five or six chapters if I could stay out here and live, so. <laughs> we're on the ice! <laughs> Heck yes! So this is Zach. Fowler. Give us, give us a little introduction who you are. Let the fans know. I'm Zachary Fowler. Fowler's Maker of Mischief and uh, started YouTube a couple years ago after uh, winning History Channel's Alone Season 3 Survival Show. After 87 days alone, I decided to come home and continue to tape myself and have fun and share it with you guys on YouTube. When it comes to survival videos on YouTube, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, you guys watch the stuff that you know, John, the Googans, but there's a whole other realm of survival. And, and even ice fishermen, a lot of them will come out and spend 24 hours out on a lake and do it in their house and stuff like that. Luckily, I'm joined by Zach, who is legit. He's not your 24 hour survival guy. He spent 87 days? Yeah. He spent 87 days in the Patagonia woods alone by himself, surviving nothing off the land. We do have a little bit of groceries, we have some vegetables some eggs, some very generic stuff, but mostly surviving off fish in this lake right here. And I'm gonna introduce you guys to the Wooded Beardsman. And yesterday I filmed a little vlog that I don't think I'm gonna make a video because it wasn't very the Bearded Outdoorsman. How's it going? But uh, we should call- <laughs> Always, we, not even close. The Wooded Beardsman. <laughs> but, but, did I, oh, I said it totally wrong. Oh you my God. Do. I always do, every time. Wooded, I say my own wooded, name wrong. Wooded Beardsman. Wooded, wooded Beardsman. Alex calls me the ASMR guy, but I'm not exclusively ASMR. I do a lot of ASMR because I find like people around the world like to see what we do, but mostly survival. Do you want to see? Do you want to see what I found? Yes. Okay. So we're trying to figure out where we want to put a shelter, and we could obviously put it almost anywhere on this lake. We're debating: well, we want to go up on land, we want to stay on the ice, but we want to catch our food, you know, for survival. So then we'd have to go out on the lake. So why not have our resources nice and close? But check this out. Like you don't have to do any work at all. You could tuck up right up inside here with just a little bit of work, put down some cedar or spruce boughs or something like that, just to get up off the ice. And uh, you can put a fire out here. And obviously you gotta knock these stuff down, but then you could here right out of all the elements. There's no wind in here. It's nice and sheltered. And then we could put a uh, fire just out here and that's gonna radiate the heat back from this wall out forward. So that's where we're gonna show Alex um, our take on survival, I guess. It's three dudes out in a lake in the northern Vermont area and it's just us. It's just us out on the lake. There's one shack out there as you guys can tell. There's a few scattered homes of like cottages that are out on this lake but there's nobody really living up here. It's not like an inhabited part of the world I would say. It's not like Chicago. It's not like New York. It's not like LA. And luckily for the next three days the forecast is showing highs of around 35 and at night lows of like 25, not real bad. Friday, it's supposed to get down to five degrees. Our last night here, so today is Monday, we're staying all the way till Friday. I'm gonna go over exactly everything I brought right now, kind of my gear overload, and then uh, we'll go from there. So this is the sled that I do have. It's a single sled. This is all I brought out here, um, my personal stuff. Obviously Zach and Chris from the Wooded Beardsmen have some gear as well, some cooking stuff and stuff like that. But Okay, so this is how we're starting this video here. This is exactly what I have. I'm wearing my sim suit. Um, they're not a sponsor of mine, but they did send me some gear back in the day when we did the Alaskan tour, thanks to Mavs. So I do have some Sims gear and I do have the Sims dry bag. Inside the Sims dry bag, I have 
a mystery tackle box ice box. I will leave a coupon code below if you guys do want to get your first mystery tackle box for as little as five bucks. Just a bunch of baits in here that I might try and do a challenge later on in the week. A raincoat, a 40 temperature sleeping bag, some ice fishing reels, a Guggen Squad backpack with some lights, some Guggen Squad pliers, a knife, and then of course some tackle. Waterproof, perfect. And then the last item that's in here is just my suitcase, which was a carry-on, and that has all my clothes in it. That's the boring stuff. Here's the exciting stuff. I do have to say a huge shout out to Dakota Lithium. If you guys haven't heard of Dakota Lithium, they make a bunch of awesome lithium batteries. This is a battery pack that I'm gonna be charging all of my camera batteries off of and all sorts of knickknacks off of here. And they also gave me two. So right now I have a total of three batteries. They're all these 12 volt, 12 volt 10 AH, A amp, AH. They're 12 volt 10 AH batteries. I've got three of them, I've got one in here and I've got two covering or powering the Garmin. One powers it and then if I do run out, um, I have an extra one. I did do something a little different though, check this out. So right here what I have is a little Garmin Panoptics, a little I say. This is one of the most expensive ice fishing unit, one, units when it comes to man, but I did it a little bit different in a sense as I mounted onto this bucket. I mounted a GoPro thing here so that I can have a GoPro facing me when I'm fishing with it. And then inside the bucket is the two batteries that I talked about. An Aquaview that was sent to me for this trip, thanks to Aquaview, and two of the Dakota Lithium batteries that are powering this whole thing in here. And then if I do want to move around with it, it's a lot easier than that bulky kind of nim nod they give you, but that goes right in there. And that's my uh, Garmin thing I built. All right, so I showed you guys the Garmin, I showed you the Aquaview, I showed you kind of my clothes and the fishing gear I brought. Now we've got, um, oh, I didn't even open this yet. Dakota Lithium, you guys are amazing. They sent me this solar power, so hopefully I'll be able to charge my batteries out here if we do get some sun this week. I brought three different style tip-ups. You got your traditional beaver dam, your automatic fisherman, and then your the snapper rig, which is a little bit different, kind of compact. So we can test out all three of those, see which one works. A water bottle so I can boil water and put it in there. My pride and joys, my babies. All my frostbite rods and reels. This is probably the one that I'm gonna be jigging with. And I actually covered up the royal part so it says Al's flush on there, which is pretty cool. The Al flush. Um, and I think this is gonna be the perfect rainbow trout small laker rod. Just got 10 pound braid on there. But I brought, as far as rods go, I brought, I brought six rods. Final piece is a bunch of camera gear, Guggen Squad glasses, drone, and I did buy this solar power pack off of Amazon as well. Is this on right now? That is all my gear. Um, I believe I do have an extra sleeping bag that Zach or Chris bought me, so or brought with them. So I do have that just in case they said I need two sleeping bags. I only brought one, and that's really it. When it comes to shelters, we're going to be building a couple different shelters this week to sleep in and just surviving out on this lake. A couple things I want to note. There is two other lakes that we might venture to to catch bass and pike, and there's another lake over there that has perch in it too. This one that we're staying at has rainbow trout and lake trout, and yeah, so that's that's the overall gist. This is day one. I think I'm going to kind of vlog each day and figure out just what we're doing because there's no real set plan. All it is is to catch fish, eat the fish, cook different things, and make different shelters and survive out in Vermont in the winter time. Pretty crazy. Hopefully you guys get this vibe that this is gonna be an epic adventure. And let's get started. my b-roll part of you dragging. this guy's the shot guy he's the master when it comes to filming <laughs> and he's his channel is you know super high edited if you guys want to check it out i will leave both of their channels below us it's us three out here and so we've decided we're making this our house for night one yeah night one minimum night one at night least one. night one maybe maybe two maybe three depending on how night one goes but they're gonna go down right now and chop up some wood and kind of get some stuff together i'm gonna use the auger and drill out this area and see what depths we're working with I have no map of this lake. I don't know if it's on my electronics. I've never fished here before. Not much intel other than there's lake trout and rainbows. Both of them are great eating fish. If you do catch a small lake trout, we're gonna keep it. And uh, yeah. Is there any size regulations? 18. 
for lake trout, lake trout rainbow pike 20 no nothing for rainbow nothing for hey, well, let's, let, hey let's just count on catching one fish before we start looking at the regulations <laughs> and being like hey we can't keep all these fish <laughs> my sled zach's sled chris's sled oh i see the bananas do you, do you know much about bananas and fishing? Well, I I know oh, I do know I know I know the banana on the boat thing, but not on the boat. <laughs> I did I did a whole trip with the banana on the boat. Did you? And I caught one pike, so that, which is not good. <laughs> that's, that's not a good amount of pike. You better eat those quick. <laughs> so we've got the camping pad, uh, the purple jacket, which it's you, famous. You just look so good in it's that. It's famous, right? <laughs> Sleeping bag, and then I got an extra one in here. Yeah, you, yeah. So this will this will be yours. Your Sweet. extra one here. So Amazing. I have to do myself. Let's camp mat. You need a camp mat too. Those are some some. <laughs> those are those are as old as you. I'm not joking. I made those when I was 16. So do the math. Holy. Those God. are as old as you. So we're gonna see some. Maybe we could do like a primitive versus a uh, new traditional tip up. Like we have so many different tip up styles. We've got these. Then Zach brought these, which are like higher end, nicer old school ones. Check 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 it out. So so when it goes down, you actually hear it go down. Like you'll hear that. Yeah. And it looks down. And then so red red means good. That one's kind of set so it doesn't slide anymore. And that one's kind of broken. Like I said, they're <laughs> really old. <laughs> They've seen a lot of miles. So since my expertise, and I don't know if I'm an expert, but since I'm the fisherman out of the group, I'm going to set up some tip ups and set up some area here. These guys are gonna grab their cameras. We've got a bunch of cameras out here and they're gonna go get wood and start building the shack, which I'll help once they get back with that. That's the plan. Let's do some fishing. We've got like a straight drop right here. We're in 13. So that is, so right there is eight feet from us and it's five foot there. So with this deucer, you could see eight foot that way, eight foot this way, see it drops off. I have to point it. It's pretty similar sideways. What depth do we want for leakers? Today we're not gonna have to deal with freezing holes and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna set this tip up here, move out a little deeper, set up an automatic fisherman. I'm just gonna set two lines up with a jigging rod for now and see what happens. You're allowed eight lines in rod. Eight freaking lines, isn't that crazy? Right there is 13 foot of water, right? Let me just show you guys a little perspective here. This hole right here, my flag is right there, 50 foot of water, and my automatic fisherman that's right there is 27 foot. So I got one in 13, one in 27. I'm gonna set one off that point right there, probably in maybe 30 or 40 for a lake trout. And then I think I'm gonna get to jigging with the dinner bell. Come on, be on there still. I thought I heard it go off. Missed the first fish. The boys are back with wood. I'm gonna leave these three flags in the water. I'm gonna help them build now. Nothing on the graph, just one 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 tip up went off, so. Now we kinda just need to turn these into usable poles. Okay. You wanna have fun with that? Yeah. Axe is there. Zach and Chris brought back some wood. So now we're just going to clean it up kind of with the ax. This ax is, this is not like that Ozark trail one you buy at Walmart that just like doesn't cut anything. Like if you hit yourself with this, your hand is gone. We are searching. I mean, searching for fish right now. Zach is building something that looks absolutely incredible. Chris is over there helping him. I'm just, I'm, we need food. We need food, guys. Fish on! 
Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Huge crappie! Huge crappie! Look at that right there on the dinner ball. That fish chased me. Oh my gosh. That's a beautiful fish to eat. You guys ever had crappie? It's amazing. First fish of the day in 32 feet of water is a beautiful Vermont crappie. Not the lake trout. I thought that was a lake trout. Fish chased me all the way up. Slammed it. Put this fish right in here. Fish number one. I don't know how much I should let it run. What do you think? I think you should just pop it. Just pop it right away. Fish on? Yep, he's there. Oh, a large a big bass. Oh, large. <laughs> Chris just caught a bass. So that was pretty cool. It's getting a little windy out, getting cold. What's the word? What do you mean? What's the word? <laughs> how's the, how's our shelter going? Are you are you nervous? Uh, I don't know. We'll be fine. You've just given up. Yeah, I'm taking a break. <laughs> he has caught the biggest fish. Look at that juicy largemouth. I'm gonna add Senor Crappie to the mix. Look at this guy. It's a slab, eh? Slab Crappie. Right to our meat pile. So me and you are eating. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no food for you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this contraption, though. Are you gonna help? Sure, I'll help. I got yeah. a lighter. Okay, good. It's very <laughs> primitive there. Uh, he's, he doesn't uh, ascribe to the always lighting it with a ferro rod or any of that stuff. I got two in here. That's he's, that's how. He's from Canada. He's that's why he's got two. Two. <laughs> one for back, one for backup. <laughs> Hey. hey, look at that. Two, two working lighters. How many do you have? You know what I've got? I've got a crappie and you're getting none of that. <laughs> all right? You're just, you're just not getting anything. We have two cots too, right? Or one cot. Are we using two cots? You're just going to lay on the ground? Well, just like it's done. Yeah. Clearly, like look. <laughs> <laughs> you're not happy with this? No, it's not that. I'm just concerned. You, just can't, you don't have I'm going to sleep under this one here, like this. <laughs> the roof's not up, obviously. Birch tree. Yeah, find some birch. Okay. <laughs> That's your mission. <laughs> Our mission is to find birch wood. The bark of the birch? Just the bark. Just the bark. Okay. So we have this access to this land that we're kind of on here, so we have all this wood that we can use and find. I've just got to find a birch tree now. Which... I don't really know what a birch tree looks like. Oh, jeez. I'm pretty sure that's what you call birch bark. Ball broke the camera. It's just, it's not going good. Darkness is setting in here in Vermont. We still got some lines in the water, but our shelter is not done not close to being done. All right guys, it's pretty hard to film in the dark. It's completely pitch black right now. We're getting ready to get some dinner tonight. We have rock bass, largemouth, and one crappie that I caught. Chris caught the two uh, rock bass and the bass. Not really sure if you could see me, but it's getting cold. This is our shack. I'm gonna show you guys the shack. We kind of ran out of time to complete the shack, but it's uh, just two tarps with an area. Zach's gonna hang his hammock from this post to there, and Chris and I are gonna sleep on cots that he has that he's gonna bring, and just sleeping bags. Fire is gonna go over there. I know it looks kind of crappy with this lighting, but. The only thing that's left to do is cook up some food now, and Zach's I think gonna be on that duty so we're gonna see kind of what he can chef up tonight 
and I'm just gonna kind of help as much as I can. Chris and I right now are just gonna be setting up this little fire. I'm getting some of the twigs outside that he's already gathered. This is the key though, right? Yep, birch bark. Birch bark, which is like paper. This is gonna keep us warm at night as well as provide for our meal. And I'm gonna go outside right now and see what Zach is cooking up. There's our fish that is going to be flayed up. And we are gonna be using that pot right there. Well, we'll fillet them and do the them in a, I got a cast iron pan and then this will be for the fish head soup. So we're gonna have fish and soup? Fish and soup, oh, yep. Wow. But you have to get it to a certain temperature before it burns, right? Mm -hmm. And so if there's moisture on it, you have to burn the moisture off first, right? So this is wet. Yeah. Right? Everything's wet because it's been, it's just the day it's been. But it's not raining right now. So, and then once we get an idea what this will do, we'll start adding more sticks on top. And we have to get these sticks now to the temperature that they combust, right? With a little bit of... Not yet, oh, okay. not yet. Um, because that'll make the birch bark burn faster. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to dry and raise the temperature of all these little twigs. So we're going to put the little twigs in there. We can add a tiny bit of oxygen to it. I've never been good at starting fire, so I think it's because I'm just not patient enough. You got, yeah. Yeah. And, and the harder <laughs> the conditions, the more yeah. patient and the more prep you have to do. Right? Because we could have restarted this fire at least 12 times. That is the largemouth. Wow. It's good? It's so good. <laughs> going to be fewer bass in, in the lakes in, the, in your future. You're going to eat them. <laughs> never had largemouth ba bass base. I've never had largemouth bass taste this good before. So you guys think we're going to keep this fire going all night or what do you guys think the plan is here? We have <laughs> Fish on! This right here is my head. Yay, but all right. This is the start of the igloo. Stay tuned. Ooh, one more. Three, three, three. Oh, more! Hey. Woo!